Hey and welcome back to Bill's Cichlid Room. Well as 2022 comes to a close, rather than do the normal monthly vlog that I've been doing for the last uh, two years, um, I thought what I'd do, I'd do a year in review. So I'll put in some clips of videos that I've done during 2022, uh, try and get a story together to sort of let you know what's been happening in the fish room during this year. Um, I've actually done a couple of videos over the last couple of days, one on the top five cichlids that I'm keeping at the moment, one on the top five wishlist cichlids that I'd like to keep in 2023. Um, so if you haven't seen those videos, if you go over and have a watch of those, and let me know what you think. Um, yeah, so 2022, it's been a funny old year. Um, we've had the energy crisis where I've had to cut down some of the tanks that I'm actually keeping. Um, at one stage it did look like I was going to have to come out the hobby altogether but I've managed to find a way with the insulating and cutting down to actually uh, keep it going. Um, I've had some real good news, um, some cichlids that I've managed to breed. I've had some bad news with cichlids that I've uh, managed to get hold of and then promptly lose. Uh, I've had a wipeout, um, I've made lots of new friends. Uh, so yeah, all in all, it's not a bad year, but let's have a look at uh, some of the videos that I've done and what's been happening during 2022 in Bill's Cichlid Room. One of the last videos that I did towards the end of 2021 was a wish list of cichlids that I'd like to keep during 2022. And I was fortunate in January to get a group of Meyerheros beni, which was a species that I'd never actually seen in the flesh before, never mind kept. I got a small group of them, put them in the tank with the other Costa Rican cichlids that I had and did a species profile on them. I'd been asked to do a talk at the Preston District Aquarius Society in February and had decided to do the talk on cichlids of the smaller kind. It took me a couple of weeks to put it together, doing research to make sure that all the information was correct and putting together some footage and photographs. Many thanks to everyone who provided images for me to use, particularly the cichlid dojo and big fish lad. The talk went well and I was working out how to turn a PowerPoint presentation into a video for YouTube. Check it out if you haven't already. Cichlids of the smaller kind. Towards the end of February, I managed to obtain another pair of fish that had featured on my wish list, the Uaru Ferdinand's Lazepi. It was a fantastic pair of fish from Pier Aquatics. Unfortunately, I didn't do too well with these, they appeared to have white spot and didn't respond to the treatment. I had also started to lose the bean eye one by one, so I made a video the highs and lows of fish keeping. I try to keep the channel honest and share all the disasters that I have as well as any successes that I have, which I'm sure people do appreciate. March was the first Northwest Cichlid Group auction of the year and it was well attended, so I did a video of it and that seemed to go down quite well. Throughout the year I've been doing species profiles on various species that I've kept, and one of the best ones for views was the one that I did on the boat court eye. Special thanks to Chris Biggs for providing the thumbnail photograph, so here's some footage of the boat court eye. If I'm being honest, it was round about March or April that I was starting to get a bit disheartened with the hobby. I'd lost the third non Lizepi, the Bean Eye, and was finding it difficult to make new contact for the channel. I speak to Paul Needham, Big Fish Lad, almost daily, and I do think that without his encouragement, I may have packed in YouTube at this point. He's forever asking me when my next video is out, and helping me to come up with content ideas. The top five reasons to keep rainbow cichlids was his idea, and in fact, it was one of the most viewed videos that I did in 2022. 
so thank you paul and go and check his go and check out his channel if you haven't already during may i managed to get hold of a pair of the pinstripe damber cichlids the melon rambo which is a species that i had kept many years ago but didn't think that i'd be able to get them again i've since added to the group and now i've a group of five We're now going into June, and as I mentioned before, I speak to Paul a few times a week, but we had never actually met. I had some grow outs that he was interested in, so we came over to Liverpool from Stockport to pick them up and did the fish room tour while he was here. You can find it on his channel. I lent him a DVD that I had made about 15 years earlier, which is effectively a fish room tour of what the cichlid room looked like back in the mid 2000s way before there was any such thing as youtube he encouraged me to convert it for youtube and i put it up on the channel i split it into three parts about 10 minutes each and it makes for interesting watching if you haven't already seen it it was quite surprising the number of the species that i kept 15 years ago that i was actually still keeping in the fish room today we had the second Northwest Cichlid Group auction of the year in July, which again was well attended, and Paul came along, which was the first time that he'd been to an auction, and I think he spent a bit more than what, what he thought he was going to. So I did another video on it, and that seemed to go down quite well as well. In late July, I went over to Pier Aquatics again, and picked up a group of the pale size cichlids. I made the dreadful mistake of not quarantining them, and put them straight into the tank with the Bocorti and some other species that I'd been growing on. I'd been growing the Bocorti on for 18 months and they were quickly becoming one of the favourite fish in the fish room. Anyway, the pale side came down with a disease and they wiped the tank out and also the tank next to them, which is where I had the Madagascan Polonai cichlids, which I'd been growing on for over two years and they got to the size of about 10 or 11 inches for the male. I was hoping to breed them, I'd had eggs off them a couple of times and I was devastated when I've lost them. So all in all, it wasn't being a very good year for new additions to the cichlid room and in fact I was starting to lose species that I'd had for quite a while. And it was round about this time that the energy charges started to get out of control and the predictions for the immediate future started to look really grim. My energy prices for the fish room had doubled in the last 12 months and the word was that they'd double again in the next 12 months. So I did a video on the energy crisis and how it was affecting the hobby. I made the difficult decision to start closing down some of the tanks so that I could still afford to stay in the hobby and I know a lot of other people who have had to make the same decisions. I did a few shop tours during uh, 2022, including Pier Aquatics, Wharf Aquatics and Maidenhead Aquatics in Wigan. These videos always seem to go down well and are fun to make, showing which species are currently available in the UK. I also featured a few videos on Steph's fish during the year, including the Brew-Lipped West African Cichlid, the Lemon Blue-Eyed Bristle Noses, and some of her other African grow outs. Unfortunately, she's now closed down her two tanks, partly because of the energy costs, but hopefully we'll set up a bigger tank during 2023. I'm sure I'll bring you all the information on that as and when it happens. As the year started to come to a close, we had the third and final Northwest Cichlid Group auction of the year in November where Steph sold most of her remaining fish and I sold quite a few of the grow outs that had been um, growing on during the year and I managed to obtain one of my favourite fish that I'm keeping at the moment the Amatolanian Analartus I still had time for one more disaster though in the cichlid room when my air pumps stopped working which meant that I had no filtration for about three days in the fish room Thanks to Mal Rimmer for sorting me out with a new one relatively quickly. 
I had some good news on Christmas Day with free swimming fry from the Nanal Artists. And again thanks to Paul for encouraging me to do a couple of top 5 videos to close the year off. As he said, YouTube loves a top 5 video. So I hope that you enjoyed watching the year in review from Bill's Cichlid Room Jordan 2022. We've had some ups and some downs, but it's the hobby, so you've got to take the rough with the smooth. Uh, thanks to everyone that has been watching all the videos and subscribe. If you haven't subscribed, please do hit the subscribe button. It does help the channel out. And we'll see what 2023 brings. So till next time, have a good new year.